really start recording. Session is being recorded. All of you are seeing this, right? Yes. Yes. Some yeah. evidence of something being recorded now. Okay. All right. Kingdom and Amelia. We talked about this last time already. Um, and we went over the characteristics of animals, um, that they're multicellular, heterotrophic, black cell walls, because um, plants have cell walls, but uh, they don't. Um, and then we talked a little bit about the, about the phylogenetic tree. Um, and the basic gist of it is um, that, you know, certain inventions happen, you know, we started out as multicellular organisms, uh, and multi unicellular organisms, and then certain inventions happened um, during development, um, where, you know, true tissue appeared and radio symmetry appeared. Um, and some of these things appear multiple times and based on based on what um, these things are, um, we're gonna, um, we can um, put them into different phyla. And all right, how can I, while I'm talking, it's got to be a way to mute all of you at the same time. I know there's a way, right? As I hear some, somebody has a lot of noise going on in the background. I, think, I don't know. I think that might have been me. I think that we're all good. So just mute your um, mute your um, thing unless. So just mute your um, mute your audio um, unless you're trying to say something. Um, and if you have if you have a question, just interrupt me. Um, so we we went. You want everybody through, to mute. Say what? You want everybody to mute. Yeah, it's probably the easiest for everybody to just mute. Um, and then if you if you have a question, just unmute yourself and and pop pop on in. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, let's try this. Um, and so, so one of the one of the phyla we talked to was the phylum Cnidaria. Um, so Cnidaria, we talked about the fact, or I talked about the fact that Cnidaria have these cnidocytes that they use to capture prey. Um, they um, they have a gastrovascular cavity, but I talked about how their uh, their anus and their mouth is actually still the same thing. So they don't actually have a pass through yet. Um, as I'm talking with my hands here, um, but the um, there there are actually some uh, some night area where people think that down in the bottom there uh, that they um, they actually make some of them actually have an anus um, that seems to be temporarily in existence. Um, so the thing I did to help you, because so we we were looking at night area in class. Uh, but I didn't let any of you on the microscope because infection control, right? Um, and so um, I made this um, pay, uh, this Google site, which you should be able to see now. Um, oops. Now, how is this? Hang on. Can you still see it or are you seeing like multiple things? No. Can you see me moving across the... Um, yeah, yeah, we can see that. Perfect. Okay, this works. Yeah. Um, okay, so, um, so what I did in order to try to help you um, see things better, uh, see the things you didn't see in class, um, here's a little Hydra under a microscope. And so there's a video of Hydra under the microscope. Um, this, the first one, actually tells you quite a bit about the phyla and about the nidocytes, um, the, the stinging things. So this, this is actually quite, inf the first one is quite informational. Um, the second one is, one is basically just um, uh, them, them feeding on, on um, a couple of um, little, um, what are they? Uh, brine shrimp, I think. Um, so, so that was uh, that was the first one. You should be able to see those things that you didn't see in class last time. Um, now the next thing we were supposed to see in class were little old planaria, um, and some of you did see planaria, um, uh, and and um, some of you, I think some of you did. Um, oh yeah, yeah, you did. Um, 
so the, the cool thing about planaria, so planaria is our the um, example of the platyhelminthes. Um, and what planaria has, apart from the fact I think they look adorable with those cross-eyed, with that cross-eyed looks with those eye spots. Um, the, the interesting things planaria have, there's three interesting things about them. One is the eye spots, because um, they, they allow them to see light and dark. Um, the other one is those little ear flappy looking things. They're not their ears, um, but they're chemosensors. Um, and so they actually use them to figure out where food is and where things are. Um, and then the third thing is this pharynx down here, which is what they use to eat. Um, and those of you who, um, who played with it um, during class, um, we, we cut some liver up and uh, put that in a dish um, with, with the planaria. With the, uh, planaria. Um, and it like slides over top of the, um, the liver and then uses this, uh, this pharynx to start sucking basically the life out of the, uh, out of the liver. Um, so the next, again, on the... Um, on the um on the google page um there are a couple of more videos for you so there's one um the first one is uh just tells you about planaria um about characteristics um tells you more about the chemosensors too and about the eye spots um the second one is literally what we were supposed to be seeing in class. So this one literally is a planaria feeding on liver. It's like a couple of planaria that are sliding over the, um, over the liver and, and feeding there. Um, and this last one here um, shows you the light and dark behavior. Um, this one is a lot more involved than the other ones. So uh, about two minutes in is where, um, where um, I, I'm guessing at the time. Um, so this this is um, a, a little while in. She has this petri dish where she puts um, where she puts paper um, over top, and then you can see little planaria moving into the side. She's got other things that she's doing um, where she puts it on a stir bar and and also has it in the tube. We didn't do that. Um, we really just did the light and dark thing, or we're trying to do the light and dark thing. Um, so, so it, it's it's probably worthwhile looking at those videos um, and uh, well, not probably that'll be your lab work um, looking at the videos. Um, so the next one we looked at were leeches. Um, I have a question before you move on from the videos. Yeah. Um, if we weren't there to complete the lab, is that how we complete it? Is from those videos? Correct. Yes, okay. that's exactly how you complete it. And, um, and one of the things I'm going to do is um, there, normally I would have had a quiz over this stuff, uh, but what I'm going to do instead, and you'll see um, that showed up on the, um, on the, um, um, on the grade book now. Um, there's a thing that says um, Animalia notes. Um, mm -hmm. So just go through um, the basically the lab notes, the original lab notes, and fill out those three pages um, that basically, hang on, I got to go look at my, them there. So there's, in your lab notes, there's a couple of pages where you can fill out things. So there's the, um, the sketch the hydra, um, talk about the planaria, and that first video, video of the planaria gives you basically most of the information that you need. Um, and then, so it's, and then, so page 13, 14, and 15. Um, 14 and 15 shows you um, representative forms and phyla and um, characteristics that they have. Um, so on the, on the website, you, the, the very first thing on the website, actually a link to um, phylogeny in Wikipedia. So you should be able to find all of that there. If you have any trouble finding information, just send me an email. Um, and okay. I'm going to find additional information for you. Does that help? Okay. Yeah, okay. thank you. 
no problem. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we, we looked at leeches too. Um, and uh, leeches um, are bloodsuckers, um, carnivores. A lot of them eat uh, insects and uh, some bloodsuckers. Um, a lot of them eat insects and snails. And I have a video on, on the website of a leech. Um, and it actually um, talks, uh, talks a little bit about the characteristics of leeches too. So it'll, it should be pretty helpful to get you, um, get you through that. Um, but what we're going to try to do today <laughs> is the skull identification. So um, Larry gave us um, materials for the skull identification. And um, what he did is he, he just took pictures um, of, um, or he, he grabbed pictures. He actually didn't take new ones, I don't think. I think he grabbed pictures from, from different places. Um, and I put the, um, the whole handout that he made for us, I put that under um, the Animal Kingdom um, in, uh, under the lab, under the um, lab handouts in the animal, uh, under the review materials in the lab, in the um, Animal Kingdom. So, um, but I have the materials in here too. So let me show you basically what he did. All right, let me show you the pages. So it, it's a, um, it gives you information about, so basically what you have is you have pages with anatomical features. Um, it tells you a little bit about the size of what these things are, just to kind of give you an idea. Um, and then you've got pictures of the different skulls, um, and you should be able to go through um, the identification. And we'll go through some of them together, um, just to make sure that everybody knows what we're doing here. Um, on the very last page of this handout, let me go straight to it. Hang on. On the very last page of this handout, he actually had, he's got the keys, but he also has, on the last page of the handout, he has a sample um, of how to do the, um, how to do the identification with the dichotomous key. Um, is everybody clear pretty much on how this dichotomous key thing works, or do I need to go over with you guys for uh, one more time to make sure? Can I get a show of hands or a little in the chat? I got this or eh, let's do this again. I mean, we'll, we'll definitely go. I'll definitely go over this here. So to just make sure that we know what we're talking about here. OK. Um, all right, let me go see. Can I make this bigger? Ah, here, there, ah, magic. Ha, ah, we can learn all kinds of things here. Um, okay, let me go back to the slides real quick, though, before we get lost too far in the shuffle here. Let's come back here. Share. Thank you. Um, uh, back to my slide where I was. Okay. Skull identification. Oops. <laughs> Alrighty. All right. Um, so... I had you guess at these guys here, um, and as we're going to go more into the skull identification this time, I actually want you to look a little more closely um, at these different skulls and look specifically for teeth uh, and for the eye sockets. Um, so when you're looking at, for example, um, on the bottom right, um, you, know, you, you recognize the human, obviously. Um, and one of the things that's that's interesting about the human is that the um, that the eyes are forward facing, right? We look mostly forward. Um, the eyes here also tend to um, the way the orbit is set. The eyes are forward facing um, on the cat, and for the dog, it's the same thing. Um, on the other hand, um, number five, that's the horse. Um, those eyes are sideways. Um, so are the eyes of the cow. Um, and that's not by accident. Um, hang on. Yeah. 
Um, that's not by accident, and we'll, I'll, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, so we looked at these um, and figured out what they were. Um, and as you as you identify your different animals, um, again, look look for teeth and look for um, look for um, eye sockets. Um, so we went through these. Um, okay. Now, um, in your in your handout, in the new handout, um, Larry talks in in more detail um, about what the um, what the different teeth are. Um, but the basic gist of it is that um, the the basic gist of it is um, where the heck is my notes? Um, that your incisor, uh, that actually we'll get to the next one. I'll get to the next one first here. Um, that we've got um, deciduous trees, which are tree, uh, trees, deciduous teeth, which are teeth that are shed. Um, and those teeth are the inside, for, for us, the incisors, the canines, and the premolars. Um, as kids, um, we only have you know, part of our molars. Um, and we get this, uh, the second set of molars um, later. Um, the human dental formula, Larry gives you in the, in the handout, Larry gives you a standard uh, complement, the full complement of, of placental mammal, uh, mammal teeth uh, formula. Um, it's different from the dental formula for humans. The dental formula for humans is 2-2. Two, two. That means it's two incisors on the top, two incisors on the bottom. One canine on the top, one canine on the bottom, two premolars on the top, two premolars on the bottom, and for the adult teeth, three molars on the top, three molars on the bottom, and you're only uh, counting half the jaw. So this is something that that you'll be asked um, you'll be asked for the dental formula at some point in one of the keys. Um, so that's why that's important. Now, when you're looking at, um, at these skulls, um, you can tell what an animal eats based on um, what the teeth are, um, because carnivores um, tend to have um, incisors because they use the incisors to grip the, um, to grip the meat um, and, and like tear it away. Um, the canines to you know, puncture things and um, and then the premolars and the molars um, to kind of, you know, tear the meat apart, basically, and chew it up. Um, whereas a herbivore, an herbivore um, needs to um, grind things very, very finely um, because it's really, really hard to actually digest grass and get any nutrition out of it. Um, so herbivores tend to have, they don't need canines because they're not trying to kill anything. Um, so they tend to have a large number of um, of very flat um, kind of molars, and when you um, when and premolars and molars, and so when you're looking at these these animals on the left, um, you can see um, that you know the cat and the dog um, those are clearly canine um, carnivores because they've got the big um, they've got the big canines and you know lots of sharp teeth, um, whereas the cow and the um, and the horse um, are more of an herbivore, um, especially the cow that's missing teeth on the front, um, on the top. Um, and humans are om omnivores, so we've got a little bit of everything. Um, so this is another example of a dental formula. And so he's got the full complement, the lion has the full complement of incisors. So he's got three on the top, three on the bottom incisors, canine on top, canine on bottom. Um, three premolars, uh, two on the top, so that it's not always the same formula for both, and then a little bitty molar over here on the, uh, uh, on the top and a little molar, uh, big molar on the, uh, over here. Um, so these are more um, words you're going you're gonna to have to learn um, because, uh, for the cell so that you know um, so that you know what these things mean. Um, so the things that you're going to see that, that they're going to be asking about um, is um, they're going to be talking about um, the maxilla, um, the mandible shores up, 
Uh, there's not a sign. Uh, there's not a, um, a sign here, but the cranium is the portion of the skull, so which is here, which is the portion of the skull that encases the brain, um, which is you know huge for humans. Um, the foramen magnum is the perforation where the nerve and the blood vessels come in, um, or the you know the spinal cord over there. Um, the I think that I have the orbit. I think on the next one. Do I? Yes. So the orbit is um, where the eye goes in. Um, that contains the eyeball. Um, the rostrum, that's basically the snout. So that's that's the uh, portion of the skull that's before in front of the orbit, uh, but after um, after the uh, the nose, basically. Um, and then the zygomatic arch, um, you'll see a lot of that. It's this one right here. So that's that arch, that's the, um, it's the lateral border of the orbit and the temporal fossa. So it's this thing off to the side. Um, so as I said, with the eye sockets, we look forward, so do predators. Uh, whereas prey, animals tend to try to look sideways because they need to be able to scan the environment to make sure um, that nobody else is going after them. Um, and then I've got a couple of features from the key. So um, those those are things that I know students tend to ask about. Um, so this was one one of the skulls that we usually have, and I, I don't actually know. I'm assuming Larry used the same skulls uh, as he normally does. Um, but one of the one of the skulls um, is a bat, um, and one of the things that's char characteristics about the bat is this little U-shaped indentation in the front. Um, I, I don't know what is in there, but I'm assuming the echolocation. I probably should look that up one day. Um, another another um, question that I often get when people use one of the keys, I think it's the, it's the biggest one. So Larry gives us three keys, and I think all three of them work. Um, the key B is the one um, that has at some point a, um, a thing that says jaw teeth bracket on canines project outward in our triangular and cross section. And when students read this note, they're like, what? Um, so um, what, what that is, it's a wild boar. Uh, we don't have a wild boar, uh, but what bracket on means, uh, it's basically short stubby teeth uh, with a deep root and a small crown. Um, which is how our teeth are. So our teeth are short, stubby little teeth. Um, and it's uh, com that's compared to um, ipsodon. I don't know how to pronounce it, actually, but something like that, um, where there's a very big crown, um, and that's horses have that kind of teeth. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so and that's just another a better a better example of the zygomatic arch um, right here, um, which which I tend to get a lot of questions about um, nasal the nose obviously here is here that's the nasal bone sagittal crest is right there um, I think it asks about that at some point in the thing. Um, and I would suggest let's go and see if we can actually do the key with one of these examples. Um, does anybody have any questions at this moment in time? No questions at the moment? All right, then we're going to go and I'm going to go to that very last page. Uh, very last page. I'm going to go to that page with the example. Um, to go through the key and where are we, where are we? Uh, 26, last page, last page, there you go. All right. So, um, 
So if you grab key number A, A is the shortest of, of the three key. It's the one on page 18 if you've got the um if you've got the handout. Um and so the first couplet says greatest skull length front to back, less than 20 millimeters, um, or the greatest skull length greater than 20, 20 millimeters. And in my experience, this is the first time that students get stumped right away. Um, because you're looking at most most people I know look at the ruler and go, huh, I don't even know how to read this. What the heck is 20 millimeters? So let's look at a ruler. So if you're looking at a ruler, uh, do I have a pen? Yeah. Um, if you're looking at a ruler, um, and this is kind of funky, but um, your your average so if, if this is a centimeter, right, this is not really a centimeter. This is too small for a centimeter. Um, two and a half centimeters are approximately an inch. So can I draw on this? Come on, tell me. My pencil's not working. Oh, yes, I can. Ha! Um, how, really? Okay. So two centimeters that's two centimeters right there two centimeters uh oh i have text ability two centimeters equals 20 millimeters so a millimeter is each one of those itty bitty little divisions so each centimeter is divided into 10 millimeters um, so, going back to the question, if Larry tells you that, oops, come back to the last page. If Larry tells you um, that this thing is nine centimeters long, um, is that more or less than 20 millimeters? But less than more than right Wait. back let's do this again so wait if it's nine oh i was reading it wrong it was are you reading it wrong okay so nine centimeters is over here right i didn't do the conversion i didn't see the millimeters i thought it was you you looked at it as as centimeters yeah, yeah. so you Pay attention that it's millimeters versus centimeters. Um, but yeah, so nine nine centimeters goes from here to here, um, which is then 90 millimeters, right? Um, yeah. So what he was asking about was whether this was more or less than, oops. Here we go back. Um, so greatest skull lens less than 20 millimeters. So that would have to be less than an inch, right? Less than 20 millimeters would be less than an inch. Um, that'd be less than two centimeters and two and a half centimeters is an inch. Um, so we can go to, it's not 1A, so it's 1B. So with 1B, it says go to two. Um, two says, large brain case smooth rounded muzzle reduced to give an almost flat face or skull not as above now the hardest thing in dichotomous keys is reading the instructions because most of the time i look at these and i go what do you even mean with that but if you go uh to the right and say huh order primates humans oh that's what a human looks like, right? We have a large brain, ca uh, brain case. We have a smooth, rounded muzzle reduced to give an almost flat face. That's us. Um, so does this look like a human? Not to me. So we can go and say, skull not as above, three. Um, now, at three, you're looking at inside, if there are incisors um, um, in the upper jaw or not. So go look. Does this thing have incisors in the upper jaw? 
We got any volunteers? You see the upper jaw here to the right. Where you where would you express expect the incisors at? Anybody? Did I lose you all? The very front. Like the, the very, very front, uh, right. Yeah, right the two, over there's two. So the right front. over there, right? Right over there. And right over there, and right over there, you see incisors, bottom on top. So they um so they definitely have incisors in the upper jaw. So which puts us so the way um one of the things I want you to do actually, and I so I lied about what I wanted you to do. Um, I, I want you to fill out those three pages in the notes, but I also want you to identify like five of these skulls. And the way you're going to write down the path, how you, so I want you to write down the path, how you got there. Um, so the way what we just did, right, would have been 1B, because greater skull lengths go to 2, then 2B, um, then 3B, because incisors are present in the upper jaw. Now, the next question is, so 3B, um, and that so takes you to 4. Um, so then half the number of incisors in the upper jaw, um, half the numbers of incisors in the lower jaw, or half the numbers of incisors in the upper jaw, um, half the number of lynch is, is more than one to one. So, and now I think we got to be very careful because this one's easy to miss. Because what you have here is you actually have, you have two here, but check this out. There's one, two, three, four things over here. So there seems to be something that's a little weird about this little critter. So this is why there appears to be a two to one ratio of upper incisors to, um, to lower incisors. So you use 4B. Um, and this is in, in real life when we're doing this in the lab, this is where people tend to go wrong. Um, now, one of the things I've, I've told you about when you're doing the, um, when you're doing uh, dichotomous keys, um, it tends to be such that the closer you get to your thing, the more likely you're going to have this experience, uh, experience where you're going, oh, that's exactly what I'm looking at. This is amazing. Um, if, if what you're reading seems to be less and less what you're looking at, you've probably gone wrong somewhere. Um, but if it starts looking more and more like what you're looking at, um, you're probably right. So when you get to five, this is this is where where this happens here. When it says two tiny incisors present behind two larger incisors in the upper jaw, or you know, not like that. And if you go up here, that's exactly what you see. You've got the two big ones and you got the two little ones on the inside. Um, so you're like, yay, this is it. I'm right where I need to be. Um, and so since you have that, you are then at your location where you need to be. Order Lagomorpha, uh, it's a rabbit. And that's basically how it's done. Everybody cool with that? Yes. Okay. Um, and so, as far as I'm concerned, I'm that's what I wanted to go over with you guys. Um, I'm going to stop recording now unless somebody has a question that we need to answer um, still on the recording. But I'm going to stick around um, because what I'd like for you to do is basically look at some of these skulls, uh, maybe look at some of the videos, um, and or just hang out with each other. Um, 
but I'll be around. I'll be around for another hour. Um, I'll, I'll actually probably do the, exactly the same thing, that I'll go look through the skulls um, and see if I can see stuff um, or, you know, that, that um, seems to be confusing or illogical or illogical or whatever. Does that sound like a plan? And you're, you're free to work on this now with me if you want to, um, or, you know, work on it later. Um, but, but turn in um, on, the, um, on the animal. Um, I'll, I'll make an email to that to make sure for all the ones who, who weren't able to be here. Um, turn in your lab notes. And um, what I want you to turn in are the filled out three pages, 13, 14, and 15 from the original, um, from the original lab um, notes, which is the hydra, the planaria, um, and the um, animal kingdom representative phyla, um, as well as um, five of the skulls um, with a path and identification. Does that make sense? Is the five school uh, skulls are key? Like that's a separate assignment? No, just put it in together. Okay. Yeah, just put it all in together in one thing. Basically, basically, I think what I'm going to do. So, so um, BCTC basically told us that we're we're supposed to be running the class just like we we normally do. Um, and what I'm going to do um, just to make sure that I get enough grades from you guys and, you know, that you have chances at extra credit, um, I'll probably I'll just have you submit um, your lab notes um, pretty much every time after class. So, you know, I'll have you fill out something so that that that'll count as attendance and, you know, you've done some work and you've gotten some things done and that kind of stuff. Do you plan to meet like this every Thursday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, is, that is my plan. Uh, my plan is to be here every Thursday. Um, walk through it, record it if you can't be here. Um, but I figured you guys signed up for a real class. So, you know, you, you should have a real person present and accounted for. Um, so I'm hoping that that's, that's something that's going to help um, make the transition into this online thing um, a little easier. Um, and, and you guys all did get the email saying that we're going to be like this for the rest of the semester. Yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that, that came through, that finally came through yesterday. Um, apparently, they're only making potential exceptions for some clinical labs. Um, and I think that's, that's probably smart. Um, all right. Um, when you say when you say turn in the five skulls with our lab notes, are you talking about page eleven? Is there? Hang on, hang on. Is there page eleven? Oh, is there a thing? Oh, yes, that works. Page eleven works. Okay. Okay, so only five of them, though. Yeah, only five of them. Um, but make sure you give me not just the educated guess, but also the path how you got there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm going to stop recording now. Um, and this recording, well, I think I'm going to stop recording now.